It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Sally here. Whenever I think about National Geographic, I always think about the science magazine and the TV shows that they produce. However, I never once thought, you know, that they're going to talk about race because race has nothing to do with science. So unless they're going to talk about the science of the race. However, it's not that. It's like it's completely different. It's talking about how many minorities in the United States are pretty much struggling. And so for this video, I decided to respond to the thread because all of it seems to be like bunkers to me. Ten years ago, Michelle Norris launched the race car project, which asked people to describe their feelings on race in just six words. She thought few would have respond. Here are some of the responses out of a half a million so far that she has received. It's like what I said earlier in the video. What does this have to do with anything with science? It's one thing if you guys decided to make a thread talking about the origins of humanities, talk about how the modern day human, the homo sapien as we know it today, originated in Africa, and from there, many humans migrated from Africa to these other continents. That would be pretty amazing if you guys were to do such a thing, right? However, this is the exact opposite. Because right now, from this thread, from what I can tell so far, you guys, potentially or not, are dividing people just because they have certain characteristics that are different from other people. And by having this sort of platform and this message, you're actually telling people that they're perpetual victims just because they're minorities. However, minorities in these countries are not perpetual victims. I know this because not only through the law are we protected like white people, but also pretty much if you put your mind to it and follow the American dream, anybody can in fact be successful in life. But uh, let's continue on with the thread. Native Americans, America's invisible, visible, invisible. We're not being acknowledged for our own lands, our own continents, our own territories, and in the history books, but here we are, the invisible peoples. As far as the whole entire issue about the whole Native tribe issues in the United States, from what I understand so far, was that the Native Americans that actually went to the United States that we call today apparently originally migrated from other places to come to this continent. And so basically, because of the migrations, they settled there before the colonization of the Americas as we know it today by the British people, by the Spaniards, by the Portuguese, and by the French. That being said though, we do in fact teach in our school systems about what happened with the direct contact with the Native Americans and also the European settlers. And so that means, of course, we talk about stuff such as the Trail of Tears in our school system, at least the one that I was brought up, up when I was in like high school, right? Or elementary school. However, that being said though, in recent years, of course, the United States government had gave, of course, various land reserves to the Native American people. That way they could live their life however they want to. And I believe they paid them reparations, if I'm not mistaken. And they also managed to pretty much own casinos. It sounds stereotypical, but they also allowed the power to own casinos. So between the res reservations that the Native Americans actually have and teaching the atrocities of what happened, as well as, of course, having powwows and all this, all this sort of stuff, right? It seems as though that we have, in fact, acknowledged the bad stuff, we actually gave land to the Native Americans, and we allowed them to have casinos and whatnot. So I think that's pretty good on that end so far. I am ashamed for my ancestors' race. Lindsay Lovell Heinrich was born in Arkansas and her ancestor ran a small plantation in Georgia and owned slaves. When I try and bring things up or I try and criticize the South, you know, 
is never gonna go great with my family. You know, I might take back my comments about National Geographic actually talking about this topic, because clearly, this is related to animals, right? I mean, here we have a humongous land whale, who is pretty much a shame of her ancestor. If I was like a whale myself, I too would be a shame of my own race. So, good job on National Geographic for the first time ever in a shred for actually sticking to animals. I am not an exotic creature. Hannah Peoples said the consent guessing game about her identity, as well as the harassment and unwanted attention she received from creepy men, make her feel like a specimen. Look, I understand that is very annoying for people to guess your race, because sometimes there are some people in which you cannot really pinpoint where exactly they come from or if they're born in the United States. Now, naturally, in the United States, because we're a very multicultural nature, we seem to have like people from different parts of the world. And so it's not, of course, uncommon for people to come from different parts of the world, like from Africa or Latin America or European countries or Asia or whatnot. So we're all made up of different people from different backgrounds. And so naturally, if people cannot identify what you really are, sometimes they might have questions about your identity or your background. Now, of course, the whole entire background guessing game, it can be annoying, but if you don't want to talk about it, then don't really talk about it. Just say, I'm just American. That's my personal, of course, advice. Or if you really have to talk about it, Basically, of course, you need to not, of course, take their intention as something bad because sometimes people are just generally curious about who you are and where you come from. That's it. I wish he was a girl. Why? Because young black males are perceived guilty until proven innocent, says Kristen Moorhead. This whole entire idea about being assumed guilty just because you're a certain race, because you're black, seems a bit like fear-mongering to me. And the main reason why I say that is because, to me at least, if you don't look for trouble, trouble will not actually come towards you. Personally, in my day-to-day -day life, I try not to commit any crimes at all because I have a clean record underneath my name. That means not wanting to steal stuff, not going to gunfights, not trying to use, of course, like uh, illegal drugs or try to freaking, you know, do something really terrible like rape and murder and whatnot. And so I try to follow all the rules. And of course, the whole entire purpose about law and order is that without law and order, society will pretty much collapse. And they're there for a reason. And of course, laws could be changed through discussion and discord. However, I don't think, of course, if you look for trouble, of course you'll find trouble, but if you don't look for trouble, there's not gonna be any trouble that goes in your way. And of course, my record's clean. I've never been in some sort of kind of, you know, trouble with the police just because I'm a certain skin color. So again, I don't really buy this narrative that you have it bad just because you happen to be a certain race. With kids, I'm dead, alone, stuck. People in this affluent neighborhood on the coast of Central California were friendly enough when ultrasound technician Mark Quarles was accompanied by his wife, who is white and German, and their mixed-race children, but the reception was always much less friendly when he was alone. I find it to be really awful that other people like to judge others in mixed race relationships. Because to me, love is just love. For my personal case, I myself have a girlfriend. She comes directly from Panama. And of course, yeah, she is Latina. And so for me, love is just love, whoever, no matter the race or the, or the background of the person. So if I'm in love with that person, I just love that person. And so I feel really fortunate to have somebody who loves me too, 
who is from Panama. And so it didn't really matter her race or her background. What mattered to me was her content of her character. And so it's so sad. Like the whole entire issue with mixed race couples is basically a course. Like I remember seeing like um, that mixed race marriage was not legal in the United States until the late 1960. And apparently there was like movies like who was coming to dinner, which pretty much show that sort of reality or that tensions that mixed race couples had to face. And so it's kind of sad that they treat this guy differently just because he's with a white woman. And honestly, I think of course again, love is love and that nobody should treat somebody differently just because they happen to be in a relationship where somebody's a different race. A shame that accomplished minority surprised me. Daniel Robbins is a firm believer in the equality of all people, but he's troubled by his seemingly involuntary reaction to seeing a minority doing well as something. He struggles to evaluate those low expectations. This is not necessarily news for me, particularly because I feel as though that I cover people all the time about how they have low expectations for minorities. And so, I'm sorry, I fail to see how this story is any different. Anyway, that's my personal reaction to this thread. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.